L2 maternal DNA haplogroup seen mostly in African American Negroes today can also be seen in some pygmies in Africa. Now this proves that the pygmy tribes have a long history of mixing with their Israelite neighbors, just as the Bible tells us. Now here's where it gets even deeper. The Abatwa or Twa pygmies write their letter M pronunciation like a wave of water. It symbolized water for them because in ancient times they had a shrine altar to the rain gods on the Mulanji mountain in Malawi. In ancient Paleo-Hebrew, the letter Mem is drawn like a wave of water as it represents the M pronunciation and was a symbol for water. Coincidence? The Malawi Abatwa pygmies also wrote for their pronunciation of Ka, which is the letter K or Ka in modern Hebrew, resembling the picture of a bowl with the meaning cup hand for making the Sembi offerings. Back then in ancient times, the Abatwa Twa pygmies offered up their offerings using their hands open, facing up, just like the Paleo-Hebrew Phoenician Canaanite pictograph, Kaf. Now the letter T, or the character associated with the T sign, was drawn by the Abatwa pygmies as a sort of X, which was the language of the Twa Abatwa Sapitwa priesthood. It is not a coincidence that the way that the Abatwa pygmy priest wrote the letter T pronunciation was the same way that ancient Canaanites and ancient Hebrews wrote their letter T. Now with all this information, again, using critical thinking, we can conclude that the pygmy tribes in Africa are in fact the biblical Canaanites from Ham's lineage. Therefore proving even more with our knowledge of the Bible that the children of Israel, including Christ in biblical times, could not have been Caucasian looking people after mixing with the black sons of Ham for thousands of years. Now this leads us to a bigger piece of the puzzle a final puzzle piece that will help the world understand who were then and still are today the chosen people of Yahuwah, the real bloodline descendants of the children of Israel. Wars, one, two, pestilence, earthquakes, and then famines, three, deceivers who claim to follow Christ, that's Matthew 24, 4 and 5, false prophets, false Christ, number four, shout four, the people of Israel shall return to the land, that's in Ezekiel 37, verse 21 and 22, thus saith the Lord God, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, whatsoever they have gone. The time is now for the so-called Negroes in America to wake up to their true Israelite identity. The Most High is calling His chosen people to come out of Babylon in a system of deception. Will you be the one that has ears to hear and makes the right choice? It's a funny thing, Mary. Once someone offers you a choice, you can't ever go back to the way it was before. If you don't try, when you go out of here, you'll find your pride has shrunk to ten inches. If you do try, well, if you do try, you may have something to be really proud of. What do you say? All right, I'll try. Good girl. So here we are today in the 21st century, and we are seeing a mass movement where black people in America are seeking out their identity. From paying attention to social media trends, I believe most people today would say that the common consensus is that black people are finding out that their identity is not defined by the word black, Negro, or African American, but with the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. But as we all know, because of years of being taught incorrectly in church that we are the Gentiles, when the Most High reveals the truth to his people, we have a choice to either accept it or reject it. Either way, the truth doesn't change. So why is this awakening happening globally? If you look to the scriptures, we can see why this awakening is now happening. 
The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it, For Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it, For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. To fully understand the biblical component of this awakening of Negroes to their true Israelite identity, we have to go back to the past. So the plantation system, in a smaller and modified way, continued and can be found in the South today. Much of the work is still done by hand. Much of the wealth still comes from one crop, cotton. Most of the workers are Negroes who live on the plantation. Today the man who owns the plantation is called the landlord. The men who work the farm are tenants. And so the landlord, the laborers, and the land are still the important parts of the plantation system. Today this owner has less land than the plantation owner of the past and he lives in a house that is less pretentious than the great mansions of earlier times. The tenant farmers and their families live on the plantation. Each family has a small house which they rent together with a section of land. After Abraham freed the slaves on January 1st, 1863, many Negroes in America were hopeful that things would change. Sharecropping was just another form of slavery by another name. In the 1900s, we thought that segregation was bad and integration was good for us. But here we are in the 21st century and things seem to have been better when we had our own communities like Black Wall Street, when we were forced to work with each other. For many black people in America who are waking up, we now know that all of our struggles in America